Welcome to the Warrior Woodshop. My name is Mr. Otto, and if you've been here before in addition to our safety videos, tips and tricks, and project videos, we like to tinker, remodel, fix, and repair a trailer here and there. So with that being said, one of the biggest challenges or the most frequent repair on a trailer is usually has something to do with the wiring and the lights. So how do you make sure or diagnose what needs to be repaired? You plug it into the vehicle. Then you're reaching under the dash or under a hood if something's not wired right because it pops a fuse. It's not something that every person is going to make, but we've got a couple pro trailer projects coming up this fall and the spring that this is going to come in handy in the whole build process and one of the unique things or semi-unique because only a few of them are done this way is we're going to use standard drill batteries to power ours rather than a 12 volt computer backup battery or something along those lines and those methods are fine just i have more access to the drill batteries being in the wood shop and it's just more convenient and easier the nice feature about these is they've got a power switch. Okay, so that way you can shut your power on and off. You, you're not always draining the battery. Obviously, you can disconnect the battery. The other unique thing we're going to do is add these battery terminals or jumper terminals, as sometimes they're called. Because a lot of times when we're rewiring a trailer from scratch, we don't have the trailer plug installed. We're just trying to check a leg of the wires aside, a particular light. Make sure we don't have a short before we move on to the next section and just helps us trouble pre-troubleshoot if there's any issues on a brand new trailer. So this is the one that seems to be the most common in some of the DIY builds, so we're gonna follow suit. Our trailer plug is a Hopkins, typical trailer company uh, manufacturer, but it's got the four-way and the seven-way. Yes, you can use a regular seven-way with a four-way adapter. I have both trailers or work on both trailers, so it's just easier to have them both in one and it really didn't take up that much more room. It did cause issues with the T-Stack boxes. It's kind of one of the reasons I had to shy away from it. The other thing you're going to want is a fuse protection for your battery and your switches so that way if something does go incorrectly or get wired incorrectly, you're not causing an electrical fire even with an 18 volt battery. They make a 12 volt adapter and I have 12 volts, so why didn't I go that route? A little more bulky on the outside. Uh, I was looking for something that just, you know, during storage, it wouldn't take up a lot of space. And I just kind of didn't like how this one mounted compared to the 18 volt. The downside to an 18 volt is you've got to have the voltage reducer down to 12. Now, where do you find these? Just search DeWalt and Milwaukee batteries on power wheels. These adapters come up 100 times over more more than likely so 12 volt is your option you can put it on top again i did not want any wires because they just got to be stretched and bundled going from the lid and that way if i want to stack another one on top there's i thought about putting the switches in this little compartment here but it's just more convenient to have it on the side all right we're going to do that on that side on the handle side or the latch side is where we're going to put our battery access got a couple screws there uh, my only like minor complaint is these don't disconnect so we're going to have to snip the wires and send them through one of the things that i didn't mention earlier that you're probably going to need for any of your boxes depends on how you want to mount is some sort of mounting plate this fits down inside so that way Things like this voltage reducer can get screwed to it or bolted to it, along with our low voltage shutoff. Because otherwise, those are going to stick out the bottom if you just, and it'll just set in there. Because guess what? Most of the time, you're pretty much carrying the box. And I could, hopefully, you can see why just having the battery on the outside, not having to unhook it and go through anything, it's literally show up, plug the trailer in, slide, or slide the battery, plug the trailer in and you have your switches to operate so it's 
the design has some logical chaos, you know, organized chaos involved. We are going to make two wire holes. What's really nice about these battery adapters or battery holders is they've got the mounting screws built in. Some of the older versions, from what I understand, by the 3D printers and stuff didn't have that. So let's see if that works. There we go. There we go. At some point, whether you're here or before you install this seven-way trailer plug, you need to kind of figure out which system the trailer plug is using. So what I did is downloaded a truck and trailer diagram. Uh, it does have colors, but since my printer doesn't print color, it doesn't matter. And speaking of colors, it probably doesn't matter because you've got to figure out which system it's using. There's three systems out there, or three uh, trains of thought. There is utility trailer wiring, there's RV trailer wiring, there's heavy truck trailer wiring. We're not going to deal with the heavy truck. We're just dealing with the utility trailer and the utility trailer, or excuse me, RV trailer. So we're going to have to do some wire testing, and to do that, you turn on your voltmeter, and when you put the two together, you've got a tone. So what we're going to do is, using this diagram that we got printed out, we're going to put it on a terminal on the plug, and a touch the bare wire here, and see what position to what color. We're going to make some notes on our sheet. All right, now that we know what our functions do, you know, as confirmed, it turned out that it was utility wire, wire or utility trailer wiring. So I, on my diagram I printed out, I just labeled it according to the position and the colors off the plug. All right, so next, I chose to do a six wire or six plug pre-wired. It's got a ground ready to go. It's got a power ready to go. So we'll tag all our grounds together and then we'll put a fuse on the red. The other option you have is individual switches. Just depends on the box. So let me get this one cut into place and we'll move to the inside. Not bad. All right, the last thing before we get to the inside wiring is these battery terminals or jumper terminals. Like I said, sometimes when you're wiring a trailer from scratch, you don't have the plug hooked up. So this will be a way that we can put a ring terminal or alligator clip and test it off the battery without having to have an official seven-way plug or four-way plug. All right, everything got a little tight in the box. So we extended the wires a little bit here on both ends. So this is from our low voltage shutoff. This is our positive and negative. This is going to be the positive and negative that goes to the plug and it'll join up with the main battery negative two. So because we've got, we're going to do a jumper wire off of this so that way it goes both to here and both to the plug so that way it's grounded in both aspects of it. Alright, catch up to speed here. This red is coming off the battery terminal. This white wire is also coming off the battery terminal, but it joins up with the negative post. And then there's a negative wire that's going to go to the switch. Even though this has separate positive and negatives, I just feel comfortable grinding it off the battery just in case something would happen. The red from the post is going to get connected into this power, and this will get connected into that power. So that way, I realized I almost bypassed the fuse there. So that way, this is also fused and regulated down to 12 volts. Because if I had just hooked it straight into the battery, it would have been coming out 18 volts and no fuse. So again, I had to lengthen some wires. So we'll set these in place. Do a little housekeeping. I think now you can see why we chose to have the battery on the outside. Um, some people skip the uh, shutoff regulator. I don't want to ruin my batteries. Other people use a 12 volt and not have to have this, so that would reduce some, 
stuff for you also. positive just to guide you here positives coming in here on the bottom the routes to here it's gonna go through the volt as long as there's enough voltage it's gonna come out go down to the uh, converter then it's gonna come out the positive and hook up to the post and break off to the switches so this will be the common ground, this will be the, so all three of these will go together here in the middle. And I might just put a wire nut on that it's just for ease of building and then these will be all extended to their proper switches. Fuse. So I can put those together. switch together since this is a first test I'm going to do a couple wire nuts here okay our three grounds and common ground plug ground voltage regulator ground Okay. Much easier to put that six way pre wired. That's kind of the lazy way out, but you know what? Now you can see why, again, if I haven't said that, why we're not putting the battery inside. I mean, you, we could clean it up a little bit, but we're good there too. All right, where is our common? switch ground right there wire nuts work they're not the best solutions but again we're not subjecting this to a lot of abuse and if i need to change something it makes it easier we're going to label these left turn right turn Tail, auxiliary, reverse, brakes. And we'll snip this. Do a little strip. Wrong one. Female slide. In connector. Nice and tight. Green is the right turn, so I don't need to extend that. Let's go put. connector on
got it. You notice the voltage regulator light came on. That's a good sign. Turns off. It loses power. We're going to use our voltmeter. And we should have 12 volts. 12 volts going through the studs. Awesome. They're all on, so we should get power. 12 volts. All right, here we are again, back outside the Warrior Woodshop, and we're going to demonstrate you how this, to you how this box works. So we've got it plugged in. This is a fully functioning, we think, works trailer. Okay, so we're going to turn the battery on. I get a little glow from inside, so I know that the voltage uh, shutoff is working. I have one change. I think I would have put an indicator light to let me know it's on. You know, maybe that'll be in prototype number two. So first thing we're going to do and watch the reflection out the building is turn the tail lights on. We're going to do a walk around the front, the back, on this side are working. And we're good on that side. Turn that on. There's a left turn. You can see it blinking off the wall. There's our right turn. You can see it blinking off the wall. All right, that wraps up this video on how to make your own trailer test box. Again, you can make it out of whatever box you want. Just got to make sure you have enough room to put your plug. You can do it in the lid. Just from review, I don't like, I didn't want the wires coming up. And just by the sheer amount of wires in here, it's not bad. I'm glad I didn't use the smaller of the two plastic ammo boxes. Trying to get a battery in here uh, would have been a little bit more of a challenge. The switches, again, are not protruding anymore, so I could actually stick two of these together if I wanted to use this for straps or jumper cables. The same size box for straps or jumper cables in the truck or on the shelf. Okay, the only protrusions on the side are the jumper posts, the battery connector, and the plug. Again, they're only protruding out about a quarter to a half inch on each side. What would I change? Not a lot on the inside. I just for logical thinking, I should have put these two 12 volt posts on this side. Since this side's the 18 volt, kind of, this side's the 12 volt, I should have, but I understand. And again, the point of these two posts, they're optional, is when you're wiring something, a brand new trailer, you don't have the plug in, you can have 12 volt power by cooking alligator clips or a ring terminal to each one of these, and it'll still run off your, uh, Milwaukee battery. They do make adapters for the DeWalt's and they do make adapters for the 12 volt Milwaukee. On a second nature this could actually be used to power work lights on the inside of a cargo trailer. If they're hooked up to the tail light feature or something like that you can plug this in and run the inside work lights off of a, a drill battery. That's where the low voltage shutoff would pay off so you don't end up getting damaging your battery beyond recharging. So. Thanks for watching again. This is one of our trailer videos, kind of trailer videos, but we're gonna, we've are gonna we got a couple on tap this fall, maybe even three or four. Uh, a friend of the family's four by eight needs to be rewired. A friend of the family's six by 12 needs to be rewired and bulletproofed as we call it. And then we have our gooseneck that we are going to trick out with to become a recovery rig. And then we do have our just car hauler that we wanna you know light it up like Christmas, yes, so to speak. So, again, this is the Warrior Woodshop. Safety videos, tips and tricks, technique videos, project videos. Yeah, that's what we do, but we like trailers too, and a little bit of wiring, a little bit of construction, so you're going to see those videos in here too. So, thanks for watching. All I have to say is, go out and make some sawdust.